for a nice and, well, I wouldn't call this irresponsibly late, but definitely a lift on the later side. It's a nice and dark 9.55 p.m., so the Anytime Fitness should be on the low end of packed for sure. Perfect for me to get a crazy back day in. So chest, dude, my chest is fucking sore. I, um, if you've ever taken a few days off of a specific muscle group and then come back to it, and by a few days, I don't mean days. I mean, like, if you had to take off, um, I don't know, maybe, I mean, let's just say my situation, take like a week and a half off a chest because you tweak one side of it, dude. Maybe it was just from doing a lot more kind of higher volume sets, like higher rep sets, squeezing, but my chest is like sore to the touch. Not that that's the goal of a workout, but for me, I guess I'm kind of just taking that as a sign that my chest needs to get back in gear with everything else. Oh, that McDonald's that somebody littered better have been empty. I don't want them to leave fucking calories on the table. But plan for back, same as normal. Pull downs, rows, pullovers of a few varieties. I think I think I'm gonna start kind of increasing my back volume a little bit and maybe try to do movements that are a little bit more um what's the word I'm trying to say? Movements that might be a little bit more divisive between the, uh, or device of the muscles that are activated. Because, you know, when I do medium grip seated cable row, or a bent over barbell row, stuff like that, I'm pretty much fucking hitting my whole back at once. Lats are working. Lats do not only get activated in pull downs, they get worked a ton in rowing motions as well. Plus traps, mid back. <laughs> Rhomboids. Um, you know, for a while, I've really been kind of under the impression that, like, I do like hitting back all on its own every time I hit it. Like, I don't want to have a back day that's very lat biased or a back day that's really upper back biased. But the logic is kind of starting to make a little more sense that, you know, let's, uh, let's just break back down into its specific muscle groups, right? Like with shoulders... I don't only do five sets of lateral raises and they call it done. You know, there's different parts of the shoulder. So I hit side delts directly and I hit rear delts directly. Now, even though a little bit of side delt gets activated in rear delt movements, like when I do laying face pulls, there's definitely a little bit of side delt activation. And when I do standing lateral raises, there's definitely a little bit of rear delt activation. But I still hit each one individually for the most part on its own. So that kind of makes me think that I should be doing a bit more, let's just say, specific volume for each portion of my back. Not that I'm going to be doing, like, five sets of traps and five sets of fucking Terry's Major rhomboid bias movements and five sets of, you know, mid-trap rows and five sets of lat pulldowns. But you know, I think what I'm really just trying to say is I want to hit each muscle in my back very deliberately or at least I want to think about trying to do that a little bit more than I am now so eh, I feel like I kind of already do that like I kind of go back and forth I do a couple sets of pull downs and then a couple sets of rows you know <sighs> just back and forth back and forth so I guess I'm not really saying I'm going to change anything too much maybe that's just kind of my perception of how I'm going about my back days might change very slightly. But either way, I mean, you're going to have a good back day if you do a fucking, you know, reasonable amount of sets of pull downs and rows. Because what does your back do, right? Let's cut it down to, let's cut it down to size. Let's cut it down to basics, right? You got your arms extended out in front of your body, either above your head, in front of you, or even below you at your waist when you do kind of more shrug based shit. And then all you're doing is you're pulling your hand towards your body and back. You know, you gotta squeeze. You gotta make sure you get a good, uh, what was the word I was about to say? A good, uh, 
I, was, I don't know what I was trying to say. A good flex, right? Really make sure your reps are decently executed. And I know that's silly coming from me a little bit because I don't, um, I don't have too much problem letting my reps get a little bit dirty. But you know, that's kind of up to you. If you're, if you're fucking main prerogative, if your primary directive is I want to do perfectly executed reps, screw this Sam guy and his fucking partials. Hey man, if it works, it works. You cannot argue with results. So go for it. But for me, you know, if I get onto a, um, you know, a lap pull down or a cable row or a machine pull down or anything, you know, let's say first 10 reps, full extension, and all the way down to the bottom of the rep, full range of motion. And then once I get to that rep 11, oh, that's a little bit higher. Oh, that one's a little higher too. Oh, I can, I can't really get that low anymore. Yeah. I just like pushing it like that. But, you know, I've done some movements where, like this last chest day, even though it was a much more chill workout than I usually do, and it was just slow, controlled, not even really pushing out any partials. Like, if you saw the last chest day, very tame, because I didn't want to, you know, re-hurt myself. I'm doing full, re full range of motion, you know, going until... I've done some work. You know when you get to a, let's just say a level of um, exertion in the set where you're like a, <laughs> oh, that's like a hiccup burp combination. But you know when you've hit that whatever rep mark or whenever you get this sort of feeling like, okay, this is a good set. I'm actually putting in work. And then, you know, I didn't go to absolute failure in every set and I still finished with a good pump. I'm still feeling it now, right? So don't get, uh, I'm almost contradicting myself by talking about like my workout styles and stuff because you know, anybody who lifts, anybody who does anything, they've got an underlying bias of, okay, I've done it this way and this way worked for me. So that's what I'm going to talk about. You know, I try to kind of separate myself from that a little bit, but I'm still subject to it. But no matter what the hell you do, if you go into the gym and you do some hard sets for a specific body part of any variety of styles or volumes or rep schemes, you know if you went hard, you're gonna get some fucking results. So I think training intensity beats training style. Or um, yeah, yeah, training style. And that's not to say if you sit here and you do like the absolute most horrendous form anybody's ever seen and you're barely even doing a single rep <laughs> that's not what I'm trying to say but you get what I'm hopefully you get what I'm trying to get at so whatever back heart sets one muscle group definitely not going to take more than an hour if I had to predict I'd say this is probably going to be a uh, maybe 45 minute lift once I actually put my stuff down and start my uh, <sighs> start my working sets so, pre-workout meal was, oh my goodness, what the hell was it? I, I, uh, I kind of woke up from a little bit of a nap pre-workout because uh, I had like two big-ass bags of fruit snacks. I'm not talking like the tiny packs. I mean, this must have been at least 300 carbs all at once. Not to say that I recommend that. And then you know, a half gallon of chocolate milk so however or no 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 not a whole half gallon well quarter gallon right, let's not get crazy but we're disregarding the source full of carbs i'm very well hydrated so in my eyes i'm perfectly prepared to get a gnarly pump so let's get in there let's get freaking started so i warmed up to do pull downs and then pull downs felt a little just off so instead I tried to do some seated rows, but that felt a little weird too. So I'm just gonna say fuck it, come back to pull downs. And then even if it's just one set and I decide to move on, you know, how many different movements am I gonna try before I'm like, okay, this feels perfect. You know, like I guess hypothetically I could sit here and like jump on all other five back machines that are here until I'm like, okay, this one feels good. Let's start here. Whatever, man. You know, sometimes if something doesn't feel 100%, and I don't mean like it feels like you're going to get hurt, 
that's not what I'm talking about. I just mean kind of like subjective grading scale. Just get into it. You know, I've had lifts where the first two sets were kind of scrappy, but then once you're really in the zone, something just clicks. So even though this felt a little funky earlier, it's probably gonna feel pretty good right now after just a touch more extra warm up. I'm actually gonna go, I'm gonna go a little bit lighter than normal, not the whole stack and make this a bit of a slower squeezing set rather than a, you know, brutish throw the weight around set. Okay. Oh. One more. Just a touch heavier. Let's, uh, let's do some chest support at T-bar rows. I've already got the weight loaded up, too. Okay, so four plates. I'd say for this machine, that's in the not too heavy, not too light range. Like, this will be a good set for, I'm not exactly sure how many. 12, 15? We'll see. I'm going to aim for 100. <laughs> One more. Let's take two off. That's enough here. I think let's move on to something else. Whew. It's been a while since I've used a chest supported T bar. These machines are fucking sick. All right, straight bar and the full stack should play nicely with each other. I think maybe two more sets of these and then, well, even if I just do one, after this movement, I'm gonna go back to something lap biased. Either a pull down machine or pullovers. Who knows? Let's just get fucking hyped up. Hmm. <laughs> 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 
Okay. Let's just leave it at one brutish set. This isn't really the smoothest cable. It's not a, I don't like it. Move on, one and done. Uh, something lat focused now. I've never used this specific machine. Looks pretty cool though. And after a couple feeler reps, feels like it'll be a pretty decent squeeze in the lats. Let's take a moment. One more, at least. No. Yeah, okay. Let's do a rest pause. This, uh, this is an interesting machine because honestly, I don't really feel an insane squeeze on my lats at the bottom. Obviously they're flexing, they're doing work, but it's almost like the fatigue sneaks up on me. Like full rep, full rep. And then out of nowhere, it's like, oh shit, that just got fucking hard. <sighs> I'm thinking, uh, I don't know. Not done yet. I want to do a little bit more. Let's, uh, let's scout around for something cool. This row machine looks interesting enough. It's kind of piquing my interest. So feel a rep pretty. Oh, this is a heavy ass fucking machine. Even if I was fully fresh, I could not be repping out the stack on this thing. This is the kind of machine I like. Like I want every stack to have a max weight. That's not humanly possible. Wouldn't that be a fucking world? But either way, just another row. We're definitely close to the end. I think maybe just one or two more after this, maybe. And honestly, if this feels super good, I might just call it here. Let's just run over, do a quick set of single and pullovers, and check this gash dang back pump. Right, nothing special. Five reps on one side, five on the left, back and forth. Heavy enough that I can feel it, but light enough that I can do good reps. Okay. Ugh. Yeah. <sighs> 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 
Now. Let's go pose down. All right, here we go. Right in the fucking limelight. Let's uh, let's just do a fucking lat spread through the shirt first, and then you be the judge. Tell me if we're looking like there's a solid amount of fucking thickness in here. Boy, huh? Certainly fucking feels like it. Let's reveal. Let's reveal and discuss. So I don't know how many sets that was. I, um, I forget, maybe like six, no, 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 more than six. Maybe eight, seven or eight or so. No direct trap work. Um, I mean, just fucking look at me. I don't think traps need any more work, right? I want my lats to get nice and wide, my mid back to get nice and thick. I don't really need any more traps. You know, you're really walking around like a meathead when you're how many sets you got left, bro? I can wait. Come on. Traps and any muscle in relation to your build can kind of reach a point where if it exceeds that, you get into the goofy range. Now, I'm not saying muscle growth is so easy that that's something you really have to be concerned about. I'm just kind of saying. Like, we all know if you see somebody with huge forearms but small upper arms, you're like, yeah, oh, something doesn't look perfectly right there. But you know, whatever. Honestly, what am I even talking about? I, I make everything as big as possible all the time. There we go. I'm, I'm losing sight of my vision. But now let's, uh, let's run through some shit here. No. Oh, wait, wait. Usually, I do a double buy like this. I kind of ease into it from the bottom. Let's do one Kevin Lavroni style. He's kind of like, like he, he sucks it down. Dude, I feel pretty fucking full today. Hell yeah. Let's see back from the back. No. Oh. Oh my gosh. No. Oh. Okay. Not really any other poses for back. I mean, you got lat spreads. No. Oh. You got double buys, and then you got the same shit flipped around. But I am fucking tired, and not just from the workout, which I definitely can tell I'm nice and winded from. I would cause, uh, uh, or I'd give most of the blame to, of, uh, to that, to those chest supported rows. I definitely think I like single sided rows at a time, at least on machines like that. Like that chest supported T-bar is sweet, but for me, every time I just got a whole, well, all the weight that I'm lifting plus my body, is just being smushed against my stomach and my sternum. It's hard to breathe. But whatever, pumped to hell, tired, of that, tired AF, hungrier than a goddamn uh, something that's really fucking hungry. Let's get out of here. I'm ready to roll. There we go. All right, so I did not immediately hit the record button. I waited for the car to heat up a little bit first. I, um, <laughs> if I get in the car and it's really cold, I kind of start like, I don't want to say my teeth are like instantly chattering, but it gets a little bit hard to speak. It's like, uh, it's like when your hands are cold and you're fucking, you're just not as dexterous. You can't control them as well. But that was a fucking sick back day. Even though it was, uh, I 
can't name a jazz musician, but that back day was very, very improvisational. I was really just like, this looks good, hit it. I like it. This looks good, hit it. Like it. This looks good, hit it. Yeah, I didn't love that one, but let's move on to this other one. And all ended well. As we all know, all that ends well. Oh, wait. Wait, what the hell is the phrase? All's well that ends well. Yes. Yes, yes, yes. So that's sore. I'm not really, not really sore yet. I'm really just kind of fatigued. Like I'm not, um, it's not like I got like, kind of like, oh, my back. Uh, that's usually the day after, if at all. You know, some of, some of my best lifts, craziest pumps, hardest sets, you know, most burnouts, whatever. It's not a guarantee that I wake up sore. And we've all kind of heard this thrown around, you know, soreness is not an indicator of, you know, a really good workout. If anything, it's probably just an indicator of poor recovery. You know, but I don't know. Sometimes I wake up sore, sometimes I don't. Typically, quads takes a little, uh... <sighs> yeah. Typically, quads takes a little bit of time to recover for me. I'd say they're the most prone to, um... I mean, what the hell is soreness? Lactic acid buildup? And a variety of other random shit about oxidization and whatever else. I don't know. But, good back day, so... Now I just gotta go home, eat some more food, have a good night's rest, and then cardio in the morning, followed by arms in the evening. Now, when I was sitting waiting for the car to warm up before I even left the parking lot, I was um, I was scrolling on TikTok as normal, right, as per usual. But I think this really needs to be fucking mentioned, right? This has to. This is something which you. It's. It's just a little bit of a disconnect in people's minds, right? If you make a fucking workout post that talks about how you're grinding in silence, how you're moving in silence, making that post means you're not doing that. <laughs> if you post about moving in silence, you're not fucking moving in silence, right? You're, <laughs> you're just making a post, man, you know? So, look, it's... Um, it's not like I don't like when people say, you know, and usually it's kind of more beginner characters uh, where it's like youngest Mr. Olympia ever, youngest Mr. O in the making. And, you know, it's like a beginner intermediate level dude. Like, that's cool. But I don't know if I see the point in saying that, man. I don't, I don't know. I think you should just kind of keep that stuff inside in a way and I'll explain why so when it comes to talking about your goals and talking about your ambitions and your uh, I mean, fucking man, let's, let's get into talking about your dreams talking about anything right? overthinking is the enemy of executing and I'm not just saying that like you think too much and you talk yourself out of it no I'm saying the idea of like envisioning yourself you know, doing something like, oh crap, once I, once I do this, oh, it's going to feel so good. Oh my God. Once I'm, once I get that medal, I'm going to be like, whoa, it's going to feel sick. I'm going to be, it's like any, anything. It doesn't have to be a competition. It could be anything. I think thinking about that a lot and really focusing on the end goal and like imagining like, oh yeah, that's going to feel sweet. You're tricking your fucking mind. By, by imagining that, I mean, we all know what it feels like. Like, imagine just thinking about whatever. Like, something that you want to do that's pretty big. Like, not just a day-to-day -day goal. I'm talking something that could take months or years to build up to. By putting a lot of thought into it and, like, oh, my God, that's going to be sweet. You know, it's like when I think about shit I want to do, I could, I could sit here and fucking give myself a big-ass smile on my face. Like, like, out of nowhere. But all I'm doing is fucking tricking my own brain into getting a little dopamine release that really is not very different than literally achieving the goal in reality. And by doing that, you're kind of desensitizing yourself to it. It's just, oh, you know, I think massive fucking goals are sweet. But, you know, as far as I'm concerned, the best way of actually 
making progress towards them. It's cutting it down to a day-by-day -day scale and ensuring that every day your goal is to simply take another step toward it. And by doing that, you know, imagine if your fucking goal was you're just a regular ass Joe or a lifter, whatever, just a normal dude. And you're like, you know what? I want to fucking climb Everest. Just, just as an example of, you know, something that's not fucking super easy to do. I, I mean, fuck man, Everest, that's lethal. That is fucking lethal, man. That takes some guts. That takes some legit effort, skill, and time and planning. Right? So, how the hell are you going to do that? I'm sure if you sit there and you're like, oh, that would be sweet to do that. Right? I mean, that just sounds like high school stoner um, campfire talk. Dude, it'd be sick if we did this. Bro, that'd be sweet. Like, that's nothing. That's just, that's just, that's just talk, you know? That's just BS. So, if you really actually want to do that shit, then if this is the big ass goal, chop it down as small as you fucking can. Okay, I gotta work on my cardio. Alright, Stairmaster, however many minutes a day. Gradually increase that, gradually increase that. You know, go on, you know, longer, longer hikes, whatever. Talk to people who, you know, may know a thing about it, right? Get some more information, learn about it. Just gradually become more proficient in the realm of whatever you're going after. And then, you know, over time, you're actually gonna start seeing, like, oh crap, this is gonna happen. And honestly, that is an absolute game changer of a mental state. The beginning of any legit endeavor, if you actually wanna hunker down and do something that's not just like short term, is kinda of tricky. Because you don't have any results, you're really going into shit blind. You know, you don't know if you're going to have the skill to be able to do it. Some shit is just either got talent for it or you don't. You either have a, it either clicks for you or, you know, it's not in the cards. And I'm not, huh, I'm not saying that's like some people can never do it and some people can't. I mean, you know, everybody's different. If somebody tried to get me to start like learning how to become a professional chess player, I'd probably do like one hour of chess and say, this is fucking stupid. I'm not into this at all. It's... Not my cup of tea. Right. But as a beginner, you just have that dream in the end, but you don't have any substance to back it up. So you just go after it. You want to see some progress. But once you actually start making some fucking gains, of course, I'm going to transition this into lifting because that's my deal. That's my shit. Once you really start making legit gains and you have some tangible proof that what you've been doing has been working, then you get that moment of, Okay, now we're actually fucking, now we're making moves. Now we're actually getting somewhere. And then that should just ramp up your fucking upward spiral. You know, that's why I talk about how the beginner getting into lifting out of absolute nowhere to an extent. I mean, this could be argued, of course, since this is all subjective. But in a way, I mean, it's fucking tricky. You know, that's kind of a hard part because you, I mean, I feel like I'm just re quoting myself because I said this same sort of speech. A little bit a while ago um, but the beginner doesn't have the results yet to motivate him you know because I mean when I go into the gym and I get to you know do my workout I know what I'm doing I get to have a good time and then I get to finish the workout knowing I went fucking hard I'm doing something that's progressing me gains wise and I get to fucking look at myself pumped up and say oh my god that's fucking sick there's no chance I'm not gonna go to the gym the next day or the day after, or the day after, the day after, right, onward. But the beginner, he's, he hasn't gotten that fun part yet. For him, it's like, go in, do a workout. It's probably hard because it's uncomfortable. I mean, for somebody who's never lifted, I mean, doing a hard working set, it's fucking hard. You're not used to that level of exertion. But after a little while, like, holy crap, my fucking bicep's actually kind of bigger. Boy, I can actually see my chest is just kind of pumped up. Oh, shit, dude. Right? Once you start seeing that, that should kind of make you say, okay, now let's let's get extra serious. Like, let's really start kind of learning about this shit. Because I know I've gotten so and so amount of gains with, you know, my current knowledge level and my current level of skill and whatever else. So if I keep working on it, and if I keep improving and I keep changing my trajectory towards, you know, as close to as optimal as I can get my routine, I'm going to be making some legit fucking gains. 
<clears throat> take a... Totally kind of lost my train of thought there. But you, you get what I'm fucking saying. I'm sure there's some good shit in there. I'd say probably getting close to the end of this little chit-chat. But one thing that I think can really alter the end goals, or the, uh, not the end goals, but the end results of anybody in, I mean, really fucking any realm of human endeavor, is the ability to assess and readjust. Right? The ability to look at how you've been doing something, what kind of results it's getting you, and say, okay, that's probably not as good as I can do it, or that is that does not seem right, that is not working. I gotta adjust, figure out what to do differently, try that for a while, and then repeat that process. And over time, if you can do that to a, I mean, every adjustment doesn't have to be perfect, but if over time you can kind of approach a better and better routine, and you're, you know, you're lifting better, you're lifting harder, you can do better sets, you're getting a better pump, you're eating more food, you're resting better, you know, you, you're just everything. The more you can gradually get better and better and better and better, then do you really not think that the results are not going to, or do you really think the results won't follow? Right? I'm not saying there's a one-to-one -one with progress to, let's just call it um, the level of perfection of your training routine. Because hypothetically, there's a perfect training routine for me based on my body, my genetics, my fucking protein fast twitch, slow twitch, whatever. Hypothetically, there's a perfect set of workouts and movements that I could do any given day, and that would be the most muscle-stimulating lifts. It would make me the biggest ever, but I'm, I'm never going to know what that is. But I want to try to get as close to it as possible. I'll never get there, right? You can't... I mean, that's just a fucking fallacy. You can never achieve perfection. But in pursuit of it is where should find a pretty decent amount of, I don't want to say meaning, but I guess I kind of do want to say meaning in a way. Either way, either way, let's cut this down to as basic as it gets. Lift hard, make some gains. If you're not making any gains, you got to lift differently. You got to lift differently. Go about it a different way. Talk to somebody else who does it a different way than you. Have them explain their thought process. And then keep an open mind, because there's a ton of information out there. And if you can try to just just grab the good bits, just grab the good the good little couple sentences of lifting info or styles or whatever, the more of those you can just pack into your pocket for later, the better. The fucking better. So, party on the morning, arms in the evening, and to the normal Joe a un well I, I would hope an unfathomable amount of calories so I will catch you actually tomorrow's video is going to be a cardio video because I'm going up to uh, going up to hostile HQ for a couple of days so maybe I'll add a meal at the end of it maybe I won't to be determined to be fucking determined but either way, just because I'm going to be gone, I mean, obviously I'm still gonna, the videos are still going to come out like normal. But just because I'm not there, just because I'm not at your gym looking over your shoulder, seeing if you're doing your cardio, doesn't mean I don't know you're not doing it. All right? And I'm not talking to the audience. I'm not talking to the general public. I'm talking to you, Dan. How many did I get? There's got to be at least a few. <laughs> There's got to be at least a few Dan's out there. Or I guess I get some Daniels too. If you, Whatever. I know you're not doing it. But. Hey man, that's your life. Do whatever the hell you want. I'll catch you next time. <laughs>